Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez. How are you doing? Well, we finally made it. We're ready to record. However, there's still just a little more setup that needs to be taking place. Tracks and recording. That's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be setting up tracks within Reaper, and then we're finally going to be recording in Reaper. Now, if this is your first time within this video, or especially if this is your first time within Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and, and don't forget to turn on that notification bell, setting it to all, and watch this video all the way through so that you don't miss a thing. And with that, let's get started. Now, here we have a brand new project within Reaper. And it's essentially a blank slate. Now you'll note the only track that we see inside the MCP is the master track. There are no channel tracks or recording tracks, whatever you want to call them. So the very first thing that we need to do is to generate a track. There's three ways that we can do this. We can go to track and insert new track, or we can do control T. But there's an even easier way. Simply double click in an empty space in the TCP. And there it is, a new track. Now, before you record, do me a favor and do yourself a favor. Label your tracks. And there's a good reason for it. The way that you would rename your track is by double-clicking on this empty space here. And you would label your track. Now that you've labeled your track, it's time for me to introduce to you something that is really, really weird. It started with version 6, and this is what's known as the monitoring echo. Whenever I hit the record arm button, which I'm going to do now, and I set this input to the microphone through which I'm speaking right now, listen to what happens. Ready? Here we go. Okay, okay how, how do you, you like this? This, this is, is the weirdness, weirdness I was talking, talking about, the insanity. insanity. This, this is, is monitoring echo, and it's really, really, really weird. <laughs> this, this is not, not video friendly at all. What this is meant to do, again, remember, Reaper is a music production software package, and monitoring is primarily meant for musical instruments like guitars and keyboards, for those instrumentalists to be able to hear themselves play without an amp. But for VO work, it's absolutely atrocious. So how do we turn this off? Well, it has to do with this speaker here. When we hover over it, it says record monitoring on. Well, we're going to press it once and it still hasn't gone away, right? Because it's now in auto mode. When we press it again, finally, sanity ensues because the monitoring is not there now. How do you turn this off permanently where whenever you hit the record arm on a new track, it doesn't go into that wormhole? Well, what you would do is you would go under options and preferences. And again, we're in Reaper preferences and we're in the device area based on our connecting and configuring our interface. And where we want to go is track and send defaults under project. Click on record config. And right here, record input. You want to uncheck that. You see how it's not checked now. And then of course you hit apply and okay. That will keep new tracks from going into monitoring echo. Now that we have solved this monitoring echo, Let's take another side trip and talk about gain staging for a second. Gain staging is perhaps one of the most important things that you can do for your recording. There are two schools of thought. One says that your peaks should never go above negative three. And one says that peaks should be set somewhere between negative 12 and negative six dB. And that's the one we're going to be following is the negative 12 to negative six. Now, the way that we do this is we speak in the mic but we turn our gain all the way down so that Reaper can't hear anything. And as you can see, the VU meter is just dead right now. I'm going to stretch this track a little bit by dragging the bottom of it so that we can get a really good idea as far as where we're going with this. And my peaks, I want somewhere in this area in a consistent way. Now, some people will say, you know, negative three, which is roughly about right here. So you want your peaks between negative nine and negative three, perhaps. Uh, again, we're going to be going between negative 12 and negative six. So then the record arm is there, of course, and I start turning up the gain. And eventually, as you can see, the VU meter hops 
and it hops. And I find that ah, the ah sound is the one like I ought to do this because I want to do this. I ought to do this because I want to do this. That's the one that really juices the peaks, if you will. And the number that I'm looking at is right here. I'm looking at this and I'm also looking at the view meter here as well. So then I raise it up even more and we go a little hotter and right there, that seems to be cool right there. I seem to be going, and if I, if I go above negative six a little bit every once in a while, then that's fine. It's not a big deal. As long as the majority of the peaks go between negative 12 and negative six, then you're good. I ought to do this because I want to do this. Now, if for some reason you go beyond <laughs> zero, which is the worst thing to do, you're going to find that the meters kind of do something funky. And I'm going to snap my finger and show you that. Ready? Notice it went past zero, but you'll note that the color has changed and everything to get rid of this. You just click on the peak indicator and you're back in the normal realm of, of colors again. Now, this is a peaks indicator here that says, of course, in this session, this is the maximum that I've spoken as far as amplitude is concerned. Now, in Reaper preferences, there is a way to reset this every time we record or every time we stop the playback and playback again. It resets itself. And there's a cool way to do that, uh, again, which we're going to get to when we talk about the uh, preferences sequence. So anyway, that's gain staging now. Now that we've got a good overall value, now it's time to record. This is why we're here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control R, which is the same thing as hitting this button right here. And I'm going to do this in three, two, one. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. The usual test of test one, two, three. And I hit the space bar. I can't turn the record arm off while this modal window is here, but this allows me to show you something. Remember what I said, label your tracks before you record. And this is why because it's incorporated in the WAV file name. Here we have the track number, the track name, the date that was recorded, and the time that was recorded. Now, this window here, we really don't need as voice talent, to be honest. Never do we need this. So let's uncheck on stop, and then we click on the X, and that window will never appear again. In the next video, we'll be looking at saving and rendering in Reaper. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And don't forget that there is a Windows-centric playlist link in the description below. This is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing y'all all the best, and y'all have a wonderful and wonder-filled day.